YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and I have the side panel off my uh, PC because I'm about to do a bit of an upgrade, and I'll show that to you in a minute. Um, but some of you wanted an update on what is inside my computer because some of my specs might be out of date on my channel. I built this PC myself, and I'll just run through a few of the parts that I have just in case some of y'all are curious. Um, the outside case I have here, uh, you can kind of see the outside edges of the case and I'll show you the front. That's the uh, front of my case here. It is a Corsair Carbide 500R. Um, it's a mid-tower case and it's capable, I think, of holding, oh, don't quote me to it, but uh, it's an ATX case and I think I have an ATX motherboard in here. My, my motherboard is a Gigabyte, it's a Z87X. Sorry, the camera keeps refocusing. I'm just doing this as a cell phone. I don't really have the right equipment. That's why I don't do a lot of these videos. So yeah, my motherboard's a Gigabyte Z87X UDH4. Um, I don't remember all the exact numbers on it, but basically that's the chipset. Uh, I have a, an Intel i7 4770K that's underneath this cheap heat sink. Um, that's just the stock heat sink. And I'm gonna be replacing that, and I'll show you what I have to replace it with. Uh, my RAM is, I think, G-Skill Trident, and it's DDR3, but it's running at a lot higher frequency. It's not 1600. I think it's, I can't remember the frequency on it, but uh, it runs a little faster, which is, you know, nice. I don't know if it ever gets used, but it, it's very nice RAM, has nice heat sinks on it. You can kind of see it a bit from the side there. It looks nice. The Gigabyte motherboard looks really, really nice, too. Um, my graphics card's right here. It's an EVGA GeForce... GTX 970, it is overclocked or super clocked, what they call it. There's the fans on the bottom, you can't see them great at the moment. But And then I've got this Elgato Gaming HD60 Pro capture card. This is for the um, Xbox, where I capture it. And if you look on the back of the case, uh, there's not enough lighting really, but you can see where your HDMI in for the uh, Xbox comes and then the out to your monitor and basically you can capture it with that capture card. Uh, Corsair CX750M power supply. I'm running two uh, uh, drives. I've got a two terabyte um, HDD, so an, a hard disk drive. I've got a fan connection in the way right there. I'll just move that out of the way. Um, and then right here I have a Samsung, uh, I believe it's a Samsung uh, 250 gig solid state drive. So I've got two drives in the tray. I can fit more and actually removed an entire tray platform that was here just to improve circulation so I could put even more hard drives if I need it. Uh, all your optical drives fit up here on the top. I've only got one optical drive in and it's just my DVD drive. You can see it plugged in from the back there and then of course here it is sitting in the front. It's just an Asus DVD RW drive, nothing special. Of course there's my front panel. This uh, case does come with a few LED lights but it's it's not meant to be a real flashy case unless you buy all the fans and stuff to make it flashy, which you can do. It's very customizable. Uh, just my side panel. I've got this um, big fan. I don't remember the exact measurements on it. It's like a 200 millimeter or something, I think. You can look on the specs if you look up the case. And then I've got uh, two of these. They're either 120 or 140. I don't remember. They're on the front. These two are inducting air this direction. Um, and then, of course, the side fan inducts air towards my components and then I've got two fans exhausting on the top of the case and a third fan which there it is you can see it exhausting in the back of the case so that's my current setup uh, what I'm going to be putting in tonight it's actually right over here it is a Corsair um, H100i GTX cooler I'll let you all see the yeah on the box this is the box I've got there so it's a water cooler and the reason I'm doing this is because um, for a lot of Total War games, I'm being told that the bottleneck uh, for FPS in the game is the processor. My processor, the i7-4770K, the way it came to me, runs at 3.4 gigs on a base clock and 3.9 on, on a boost clock. And some of the newer processors run at 4 gigs with the higher boost clock. So what I'm going to be doing is try and overclock my processor to be more in line with some of the newer i7s and try and get a little additional lifespan without having to replace my motherboard um, and my processor, which is quite expensive. So that's what I'm doing here. The cooler is probably overkill for what I need, but it was on sale, and I've always wanted to put a water cooler in just for the fun of it. So that's what we're doing, and I will show it to you once we get it installed. My build after the install of the water cooler. Now, I have had this in for a couple weeks. 
Uh, one of those weeks I was traveling, one I was using it. So I've got a little time just to kind of get settled in with it and uh, get used to it. But you'll notice right off the bat that I spent some time cleaning up my cabling. So say down here, here, all the way up to there, you know, I just spent some time cleaning up the cabling and um, making things a lot cleaner and feeling pretty darn good about it at the moment. You only have to hook up a few cables to the water pump itself. There's the CPU fan, so you have to put that in. It attaches there. And then there's another, um, this is a kind of an outbound fan cable right there and right along with it is a USB header. And that runs out the USB, which is the round one, uh, powers the pump. And then the flat one is the fan controls that runs up to the fans, and I'll show you those in a minute. But that USB power uh, just plugs into one of your USB headers. I've got quite a few USB headers back here, and I've just got it. Um, I think I plugged that. I think that one's the fan control right there, or the uh, pump power. So, yeah, that's the power to the, the pump. So this is the, uh, the pump here for the Corsair. Uh, it's the H100i GTX. So that's the pump. Uh, you can see from the video previously, it's looking a heck of a lot better, obviously, than the Intel stock cooler, as we would expect. Um, it lights up, does RGB, which obviously doesn't affect performance. Um, I will talk through performance. This is the actual radiator. It's up in the top of my case. So of course, your, your inbound and outbound lines here are coming from the pump and to the pump. And then you got all your fins and everything where it does the cooling. Not all that different than an automobile. Um, I can show you, let's pop this uh, top off and I'll run around here and kind of show you. I have my fans set up in a pull. Um, in the instructions, it recommends that you set them up in a push. And there's a couple of reasons I didn't do that. Um, one reason I didn't do it, and I thought this would work, um, I, th I thought the radiator would actually fit in this slot in the top of my case with this little dust guard on top, but it did not. Um, so I put the fans up here because they fit. I wanted my dust guard to be able to go on, just an aesthetic thing. And then I hung the radiator from the bottom. And so my fans are in a pull scenario because they're pulling air into the radiator. Uh, they wanted the fans ideally on the bottom of the radiator pushing. It's been a while since I've been in a fluid flow class and I don't really recall all the equations, but um, you probably would have slightly better static pressure. Um, if you had a push, but uh, just keep in mind that when my case is put together, I have this fan right here, which is a 200 millimeter fan, and it's pushing air. Um, and then I've got two fans down here, uh, one by the drives and then the other one above them. So I've got three fans inducting air and three, uh, three fans uh, exhausting air. There should be more outbound or inbound volume, which means that we should have a good push. And as I've tested the radiator, it works quite well. Anyway, that's what it looks like. Um, runs pretty quiet. It has some different settings. You can put it on a quiet setting if you're not going to actually load the processor and it runs quiet enough that you can't hear it. If you put it on a balance setting, um, it's a little bit louder. Does all of like, so I ran it on the balance setting for a day or two. Sorry, it keeps going in and out of focus. It's just a cell phone camera. I ran it on the balance setting uh, for a couple of days and um, it did all my gaming and recording just fine without getting warm. And then if I turned all the way up to the performance setting, it basically just drops the temperature a few more degrees and it really isn't even necessary. Just on balance, it does fine. Um, on the balanced, yeah, you, you can hear it. You can definitely hear a pump running, but mine sits under my desk and it's not a big deal. If this was gonna sit like right next to your ear and you didn't have earphones, maybe you were using a speaker, uh, then yeah, you would hear it. If you have a headset on though, you're not gonna hear this uh, on the balanced or the quiet. So anyway, that's the install. It's working great. Um, and my case is looking great. I'm feeling like it's a little bit more of a professional build now, albeit not perfect. It's uh, pretty good considering, like I said, that this was built by myself and it was the first time I had done a build. So pretty excited about it. The product works great. Temperatures are great. And I will... Uh, let you all ask me any questions you have. I'll answer those in the comments. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.